Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission of Mech Tech Keyboards, and I hope everyone's having a wonderful pre-holiday weekend. Um, Thanksgiving's coming up. I know a lot of people get the whole week off, or at least half the week off. I'm looking forward to eating some turkey. Anyway, I don't know how long you guys have been in the hobby, but I definitely remember the days when there was only one, two, maybe three new keyboards a month that were announced by the, you know, the the manufacturers that have in stock keyboards. Um, and, you know, it was like, oh, a new keyboard. You know, had a whole month to, like, prepare for it and, you know, check it out and everything. Nowadays, it seems like almost like there's a keyboard released almost every day. And don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, but it's hard to keep track. I have a list of keyboards that I want to review and that continues to grow quicker than the rate at which I can review them. So... Please bear with me. I have a whole backlog of videos that I have to get back to. Keyboards I've already reviewed, but I want to mod. But new keyboards keep coming out, and people ask me about them. This one, a friend of mine asked about on Discord. He was like, have you picked this one up yet? And I'm like, I didn't even know this one existed. Um, this is from Royal Kludge. It's the H81. It is Royal Kludge's first gasket mount. And I put that in air quotes because I'm not sure if this is going to be a gasket mount like say the TH-80, the IK-75, the next time 75 don't get me wrong, they do have gaskets, but they are compressed so hard that in order to get any sort of flex, you do have to do some modifications. Um, there's just no room, despite the gaskets, there's really no room for the plate to flex. So, I'm very interested in this one. It is a three-mode keyboard. Um, this uh, rotary knob is only used for mode switching between um, the, the dongle and the, I believe it has three three Bluetooth slots. All right, let's go ahead and take a dive into it. All right, we've got the manual here. The manual just goes over certain features. Looks like it does have a Type-C USB hub. Uh, quite a few RK boards will have the ports on the back, and I actually kind of appreciate that. Uh, I usually use a wireless mouse and to be able to put the dongle, you know, closer to the keyboard because the mouse is obviously most of the time it's closer to the keyboard than it is to your actual workstation. So, and then yes, like, you know, Bluetooth connections. Looks like it has a battery level reminder by hitting certain combination of keys. 2.4, there's the backlight controls, shortcuts, backlight recording methods, multimedia keys for Windows, for Mac, uh, second set of the function keys, and it is Bluetooth 5.1. Uh, I can say, though, I'm not much of a wireless user. I do use the keyboard wireless sometimes, especially on the go. And I have noticed a significant difference. If you're, if the keyboard is anything but 5.0 or higher, um, the battery will wear out quicker. You won't have as much distance, and there will be missed keystrokes and just issues altogether. Uh, I've basically, uh, especially because all of my workstations have Bluetooth 5 or higher, uh, so I notice a difference, and when it's Bluetooth 5 or higher, it definitely is a better experience. Um, I don't necessarily like 2.4 gigahertz. It's running in the same range as the older Wi-Fi, and unfortunately, I live in a somewhat urban environment where uh, there's tons, I mean, literally, there's pages and pages of wireless networks within my range, and the majority of them are 2.4. So 2.4, they're I mean, I've seen keyboards stop working as soon as somebody turns on a microwave if they're like working in the kitchen, like, what's going on? Why is my keyboard not working? And then as soon as the microwave stops, it starts working again because it literally just scrambles the signals. So I uh, prefer Bluetooth, and I'm just kind of curious as to why 2.4 is still being used. But I guess I... I guess that's for people who just don't have Bluetooth on their laptop, on their desktop, or whatever. So, you know, here you can have wireless without having to buy anything else. But why not just include a Bluetooth dongle? Ah, that's all I'm saying. I think it would simplify it. So there we see the port that goes to the computer, and that looks like a USB flash drive. I wouldn't necessarily think of that as a hub. And a flash drive, actually, even if you have the adapter, I don't think it's going to fit with the cable right here. So, 
those might be a little bit close together. But before we take a real close look at the keyboard, let's just see what accessories we have. Okay, so these appear to come with, that's one thing I can appreciate from Royal Kludge is that they always, almost always I should say, almost all of their boards include extra switches. Now this is, uh, yep, they're marked RK and it's a linear, but it's definitely better than regular RKs for sure. I mean, the quality of it seems much nicer. Hmm. By the moldings, I can't really tell who makes it that circle though. I've seen it before, but, um, I'm curious, but it's nice that they do include some extra switches. These are linears. I don't know what they're called though. I'll have to look that up. You get a nice keycap wire keycap puller. I prefer the metal ones. And you do get a C to C cable with Keychron. One more time, please put a tail on your cables, please, for the adapters. I, I don't understand why Keychron doesn't do it, but RK does. That That's just simple in it to start today. All right, so we've got, all right, so they do have a pocket, good thing. And they actually have a metal bat. This, if I'm not mistaken, I think that might be the first time I've actually seen a metal like badge. I mean, it could be just something plated. Um, the feet are different too, that I remember on most arcade boards, usually they're flat. These are a little curved. We do have three feet. So we're gonna have three different sets of typing angles. Um, and we have what looks like if I had to guess, it looks like an OEM profile. So, all right, so we've got it off. Let's see what happens when we plug it in. Oh. Yeah, those ports are just a little bit too close together. All right, we've got some light coming through and we've got a charging light. All right, now that's nice, I gotta say. I hate it when they repurpose a regular LED to show that it's charging. Like, I mean, LEDs are cheap. Put an indicator, that's specifically for it, a dedicated indicator. So we see that we have a very common 75% layout as is uh, common in the IK75, the TH80, the James Donkey um, A3, um, no, just numerous, numerous models. The next time 75, so many have come out. Um, GMK Pro. All of these are basic, basically imitations of the Satisfaction 75, which you can look it up. I'd love to have it, but I mean, aftermarket prices on that thing is insane. So um, it has a knob and it has an OLED screen. So that's where a lot of these came from. I think GMMK was the first one and then everybody just went went nuts with it so now this has a little bit of an interesting design i do i like that that's a little bit retro that was very big in the 90s having those um gills i would, I would say i mean usually they were breathable but obviously this is just for um for for looks but it looks like we have i mean nice rgb because it does come through even though the these are um, so yeah if i'm not mistaken this may be the first Royal Kludge board that I've seen that actually has uh, dual shot um, and not shine through for their stock keycaps. Um, they've definitely gotten a bit thicker. The last several revisions of Royal Kludge boards that I've actually taken a look at, I've been impressed with how well they are improving. It's like they're actually either you know, just reading forums or actually have a user group testing their boards and giving them suggestions as to what to do because their latest revisions of certain ones of their boards have severely increased from the first time, you know, the first revisions. And I have a few of them, namely like the RK84 and the RK96 that I've seen. So anyway, do we have flex? Oh. We actually do have a little bit of flex, but that little bit of flex is about the same as we'd be getting. Oh, I'm plugged in. I probably don't want to be pressing on all these keys. I'll just go ahead and put it on one of the modes. Anyway, um, this kind of uh, 
gasket mount feel that we have here is um, is very similar or reminds me a lot of, like I said, those numerous kits that have come out here in the last year, maybe year and a half, um, that are the 75% with a knob with either two or three uh, buttons or keys on the navigation column with either the exploded arrow keys or the arrow keys pushed up. So it has the same number of keys. It's 83 keys, I believe, with that one. Um, I do like that they have the delete in the right space for me. Uh, page up, page down, pause. We'll have to take a look at the software to see if they've also improved on that as well. Now, taking a look at this, I am wondering, just out of curiosity, and let's hope I don't break anything. First, can I take this knob off? All right, this knob does not want to seem to come off easily anyway. I'm trying to do it with a plastic spudger so I don't break anything. But, ah, there we go. All right, so we got your standard D knob there. But since we don't have any switches on the side, I'm wondering if this is all pressed. Up. Nope. Maybe not. There doesn't seem to be. Oh, wait a minute. It may be. Always, if you're ever going to do this, if you're doing an opening a snap fit, please use plastic spudgers. If you use metal, you will break stuff. I mean, it's almost guaranteed. Um, those plastic clips, though strong, they aren't the strongest. All right, so it's wanting to pop up a little bit, but the sides are the ones that are really tight. Oh, I'm snapping it back in. That's not the direction I want to go in. Right. So, I mean, I definitely do want to try to get in there, but I'm not sure I want to start taking it apart right now. Uh, we do have it. Oh, wow. It looks like we have a PC plate. Now, that is a difference. What do we look like on the stabilizers over here? Stabilizers are fairly well well attached. I mean, they could probably use a little bit of tightening, but does not appear. Oh no, they do. They have the slightest amount of lubrication. Hmm. Very nice. Let's see the rest of these. See, it's a double shot, just at the top. But thankfully, the body's at least 1.1. But um, it's nice to see that. For the most part, the stabilizers seem to be quite stable, and uh, and they are just lightly lubricated, which is always nice. Um, but the more I pull off of here, I don't really see any screws. I've got to believe this is a press fit, and I really do. But guess what? I'm gonna go ahead and leave it for another video. Right now, I mean, my initial impressions of this keyboard are that it's actually quite well built, especially at the price that it's currently going for. Um, it doesn't sound half bad. doesn't really have hollowness in there, so there's, I'm going to assume that there's some foam in there or some sort of dampening. This is kind of silly unless you're using a USB-C hub or You've, I mean, even if you, because if you use a converter, the USB-C to USB-A, which I thought I had one around here, but I don't see it handy. Um, it might not have enough space. It might actually clash with this. 
could have been moved over just even 10 millimeters um, but now obviously not having the knob for volume I think for some people it's going to be an issue but as you can see you do have uh, the sub legends here which a lot of keyboards have them right here for the uh, the vol all the multimedia controls so it's one extra step um, this does have some of the sub legends it has insert underneath pause okay and scroll lock underneath delete that doesn't make much sense um, I'll have to take a look at the software when I come back to it but for right now I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna get technical with it real quick and then we're gonna go ahead and do a sound test because this one's gonna require me doing a little bit more work off camera so I can make sure I know the proper way of opening and don't give anybody any bad directions on moving this forward I do like the lines of this keyboard I've got to say for RK it's it's a change in direction I like the fact that it has the three feet I like the fact that it has the magnetic pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver and it seems to be pretty strong it doesn't seem to want to fall out too easy so I've seen some of them where the magnet was literally just like a drop and it didn't hold for nothing so this one does have a you push it in and push it down and it has a physical lock bit of a lock like a little wedge um, and I like just the standard feet so yeah this is uh, so far I'm actually kind of impressed. All right, so I got a little curious because I'm not usually one that has trouble getting into a keyboard. And I found that the corners just did not want to pry. Didn't find any screws from above, but once I took those nice little rubber feet off, I found screws underneath. What does this usually mean? It usually means stay out. Um, I am not a fan of keyboards that do this. Uh, one of the last ones I had was the uh, one of the Epo Maker ones. It was a 75 with a barrel knob and coat around the side. I can't remember the name of it. The Claire, that's it. And that was not a very moddable um, keyboard. So usually if they're hiding the screws underneath uh, something that's you know taped usually means stay out and that's not something that I look forward I mean uh, keyboard should be you know as well as it can be for the price that you pay but you should always have the ability to you know if you want to get in there and modify it that you should be able to so let me just stick these screws in a spot where I won't lose them Yeah, so I knew if I, I knew there was something holding it down because I was like, no, these clips cannot be these this strong. They just can't. All right. Got all four of our screws now. It's going to be a little tight around here because there's literally doesn't even look like there's any space to. Uh, this is like almost like just waiting to break. Oh. Oh! It has its own little daughter board. Well, look at that. Yeah, that kind of surprised me. All right. So, what do we got here? I'm not going to disconnect that just yet. Oh, we definitely have a gasket mount. Um, though, that's kind of... That is one of the poorest implementations of gasket mounting I've ever seen. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's just, uh, that's just sloppy. Now I do have extra gaskets that I can replace that with, but I'm just not too too psyched about that. 
All right, we can see that. I mean, the the USB-C hub and port is on a daughter board, and it does look like we have a thin, though significantly decent, I guess, um, silicone mat for some sound dampening. And we have a battery hiding under here with uh, 3,750 millivolts, uh, milliamps, milliamp hour. So not not too shabby. 4,000 is usually about a good number to, to aim for. Uh, and then we can see the back of the PCB, which has TTC hot swap sockets. Um, I wonder if TTC is the one that manufactures RK switches. Just out of curiosity, especially these that I'm not familiar with at all. But um, I've got to say, I'm not very impressed with uh, their uh, implementation of gasket mounting. But I definitely did want to get in there. I do like that the knob is on the case because then you don't have, because I was like afraid that this was attached to the PCB and it was going to break coming up. But thankfully, it's actually screwed in with two screws at the top. I think that's a nicer implementation than keeping it on the board. Because especially if it's a gasket mount board, what's it going to do to the knob? But that's not going to affect it whatsoever. Now, um, why are you covering up screws that are needed to get in here? Oh, okay. That's a... A question we'd like to know. Let's go ahead and put these feet back on. Yeah, that's this is uh, I mean, I was actually looking forward to uh, uh, modifying this keyboard, but honestly, at this point, I really don't think I'm gonna wait for another iteration because this is not modification friendly. Uh, this is not a, uh, RK is known for having keyboards that, that, um, are modifiable. This is not a modifiable keyboard. I mean, if you're hiding screws underneath something that's, you know, sticky on with double-sided tape, you're hiding the screws. Um, and that you're basically telling the consumer, uh, stay out of this keyboard. So it's like, hmm. Because, I mean, I'd like to do a silicone pour in there um, or even use the kill mat, do the tape mod and the PE foam mod. But I just, I don't know whether you want to call it principle or what, but it's just not what I consider an enthusiast grade keyboard. I mean, we can have low, mid budget keyboards that are enthusiast grade and you can get in there and you can make them sound better i mean don't get me wrong this doesn't sound horrible stock but i know that i could finesse a much better sound out of this keyboard uh with just about half hour 45 minutes worth of work but if they don't want me to get in the keyboard in the first place it's like mm, nah so I, uh, I personally, I'm going to pass on this keyboard. I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to come back to this, unfortunately. I, I don't think, if you don't want me to get in there, take your product back. I purchase keyboards because I want to modify them at one, one point or another. I mean, they may sound great stock. I may only want to do minimal modifications, but I want to be able to get into the keyboard without being impaired. Now, granted, obviously, I can put some double-sided tape, fix those back up. I mean, the, the adhesive was still on there, so they're on there fine. But that's not the point. I bought a keyboard. I should be able to get into it easily. Those screws appear to me unnecessary because I think the clipping alone along the side is enough. But if they wanted to add maybe one screw here, one screw here, that was, you know, recessed and not under the feet. Why? Right. That'll give you that extra support with, while still, I guess, inviting 
customers to get in there and modify it if they want. Oh, you don't like the sound? Okay, we'll get in there and modify it. But this to me is anti-enthusiast, anti-mod. Um, it's basically saying take the keyboard as is. You know, you can switch, change the switches and the keycaps out, but that's it. And I, I don't like that. I really don't. So those are my thoughts. All right, let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the Royal Kludge RK-H81, Royal Kludge's first gasket mount keyboard. It MSRPs or retails for $89.98. It is a three mode keyboard that includes 2.4 gigahertz receiver, which does have a pocket down at the bottom for it, as well as Bluetooth 5.1 with three slots for Bluetooth devices. It comes with a 3750 milliamp hour battery and it uses a knob to determine the mode switch, either from G, which is the uh, included 2.4 gigahertz dongle, or the three different slots for Bluetooth devices. It weighs in at 858 grams and does include stock a PC plate. It comes with what are called RK Sky cyan linear switches the little that i could find about them they're factory lube they're a 50 gram actuation with a 60 gram bottom out linear switch with a travel of four millimeters and gold contacts now the chin of this keyboard standing or sitting naturally uh, comes up to 21 millimeters while the max sits at 26 millimeters of height, giving you a typing angle of 5.5 degrees. When using the middle legs, you're going to increase the back height to 30 millimeters and your typing angle to 7.5 degrees. Using the last set of feet, you're going to be taking the keyboard up. 35.5 millimeters in the back and giving you a 10 degree typing angle. All of them kind of on the lower end, but I think they're going to be more compatible for most folks. So this is the RK-H81. All right, so we've taken a look at this keyboard. I personally am not going to stick with it. I not only have plenty of 75% keyboards, but none of them are hidden or prevent me from getting into them. I have learned my lesson with that, with the Eclair, um, the company saying, don't get in here. And well, they don't want me in my product, then I don't want it as my product. But please don't take it as, oh, you shouldn't buy it. If you're not looking to do much modifications, but maybe switching out uh, the switches and or the keycaps, this keyboard might actually be a good choice for you because it does come fairly well rounded out of the box. I mean, the gasket implementation, sure, it's not, I mean, it. I almost hate calling it a gasket. It's like a faux gasket. It has a couple of strips of neoprene. They're not even straight. They're on the plate and they barely line up with these wedges that basically come out of the, the base. Now, you can cut some of those wedges down and add some different type of, um, like whether it be poron or other adhesives or other type of gasket and get a little bit more flex out of it but I know people want flex and while this does offer a little bit it does not offer any more than say your THNJ80 your IK75 all those stock I mean I know all those can be made too just like this one can be made more flexy so I'm sure that this one can be made more flexy I personally I'm just gonna say no on this keyboard but this might be a good pick for many people, especially like I said, you're only looking to, you just want to put in some different switches and some diff different keycaps. I think you're going to be happy, but I think a lot of people might actually be happy with it the way that it sounds um, stock. But that's what I'm going to go ahead and do is leave you guys with this stock sound test of the Royal Kludge H81. Um, if you guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. What are your thoughts when manufacturers do hide screws and are basically saying, stay out i mean how do you feel about that no problem no big deal yes a big deal on the fence i'd love to hear your guys' thoughts i'd also like to hear your thoughts about this keyboard and what you think about it because if nothing else at least royal kludge is moving in the right direction i mean 
I got this keyboard. I just checked. It was $62.99. It's on sale right now on Amazon. So it fits in the price range of a lot of the popular 75% uh, with knob. Now, granted, it's not a volume knob. Bare bone. And this is fully built. Now, normally it's $90. I definitely would not pay $90 for this. If this was closer to $49, $45, I might actually keep it. Might. But at a retail of 90, um, and I got it for you know 65 and change with tax, I just I don't think it's a worthwhile investment, especially with the number of 75% boards I have. So this is more of my opinion, and you know that's what I'm doing here. I mean I try to be you know objective, but obviously this is all going to be a little subjective. So because uh, I mean I know I, I had one comment one time. You need to be more objective. I'm like well. I am a subject, and this is my experience with this keyboard. This is my opinion. I mean, so anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a sound test for now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.